Welcome back students. In this video, we're going to look at a type of reaction called oxidative cleavage. In the oxidative cleavage reaction, we're going to look at the general reaction first, and then I'm going to give you a couple of hints for drawing the products. When we start with this reaction, we start with an alkene, and that alkene then reacts with ozone, which is O3. The second step can be two different reagents that I'll show you on the next page. One of the possibilities is DMS, which is dimethyl sulfide. Overall, what happens is you see a chopping where the alkene is, and you get oxygen on either side. What that means for us is if we start with one alkene, at the end, we're often getting two products. Let's look at that in more detail. Now, if we start with an asymmetrical alkene, instead of getting two of the same products, we're going to get two different products. If we imagine again that we're chopping here, and where we're chopping, essentially, I like to imagine, like I have a cleaver that has oxygen on either side. So where I'm chopping that pi bond, we're automatically putting oxygen on either side. The Klein textbook likes to say to draw out your alkene with a really long alkene bond, and then come back in and erase the alkene, shorten it and shorten it, and put oxygen on either side. So that's the hint that the Klein textbook gives you, and I think it's pretty good. But see how because we started with an asymmetrical alkene where this side was not the same as this side, now we get two different products at the end. And depending upon the substitution of each of these carbons depends upon if you're ending up with a ketone or an aldehyde. So notice that if you have two carbon groups on either side of your alkene, you get a ketone at the end. If you only have one carbon group here, you get an aldehyde because this hydrogen is one we often do not draw. A really interesting reaction is when you end up with the same reagents, except you see that you have a cyclic alkene at the beginning. This takes a little bit more thought process, so let's work our way through this. We're still going to get cleavage, so where we have that pi bond is where we're going to see cleavage. The problem is, is our two products are not two different products now because they're connected to one another. This just takes a little bit of practice and numbering to make sure that you are not missing any carbons. What I want to do is I want to start numbering here at the methyl. Not because this is a nomenclature numbering, it's just that's where I'm starting to number. And I want to do this to make sure that I end up with the right number of carbons at the end and the pi bonds in the correct location. So if this is carbon one, then there's two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I should end up with seven carbons that are all connected in a chain at my end product. And I should have a pi bond to an oxygen at carbon two and carbon seven. A lot of times when students are first learning, what helps the most is for you to draw out a really weird looking ring. Where the pi bond is, just extend that in, incredibly long, like so it looks just so silly. And then draw in your methyl. And once you have that extended, come back in, erase, shorten those pi bonds, put in those oxygens. Those oxygens are not bound together, they're just really close in my drawing because I probably needed to make it a little bit longer. And now we can start to draw it in a normal fashion. I mean, if you're my student, I would take this on the test, but you know, if we wanna make it look pretty, because you know how I like to make things look pretty, what we would do is just rotate around this bond so that we have, again, one, two, three, four. Those carbons are just going to come downward, All right? So one, two, three, four. At the second position, there is a pi bond to oxygen, All right? So here we are, one, two, three, and four. And then I continue, five, six, seven, right? So five, six, seven. And at the seventh position, there is a pi bond to oxygen. So four, five, six, and seven. 
five, six, and seven. And the longer drawn out way, the one with the zigzag, that's the typical way that you're gonna see these drawn because that's how we draw our products. But again, if you need that stepping stone of this middle way that I'm highlighting in yellow, then please do it. There's one other thing that I'd like to point out before we wrap up, and that is the second set of reagents. The second set of reagents is necessary to complete the reaction. If you want to know why, you can go look up in your textbook the complete mechanism for this. But if you're in my class, we are not going to test on that mechanism. Let's wrap up. In this video, we looked at a reaction called oxidative cleavage. In the oxidative cleavage reaction, you have an alkene where the pi bond of the alkene is chopped and oxygen is added to either side. If you have a symmetrical alkene, you're going to get two of the same product at the end. But if you have an asymmetrical alkene, you're going to get a mixture of products. The really interesting example that we looked at was when you start with a cyclic alkene and you get one product at the end that has two C double bond O groups in it, where that C double bond O group has a specific name. It's called a carbonyl. And we'll talk more about that when you're in Orgo 2. Thanks so much for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.